Radio Barn Raisings, the idea is that we bring together a whole lot of people that want to learn radio skills or that already know radio skills and like to teach them. And now I've got to make a little confession. This here, what's going on exactly right now, it's not exactly the most efficient way of building a radio station. <laughs> but we do Barn Raisings instead because we think that it's very important that the technology behind radio be demystified. Because considering the kind of government that we have, we think it's good for as many good people to know how to make radio stations as possible. I introduce Judy Welsh. Judy Welsh! Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm responsible for all good things happening this weekend. I'm not <laughs> responsible for the weather. It's been one long, hard battle, but we're here. We won, and I am so glad that you are all with us. Yay! We have a hell of a crew here putting on the weekend for you. I really apologize about the rain, but you know, it'll give you a story to tell you great. <laughs> It's a lot of rain. We should have known. It said it in the forecast. We were sort of hopeful. What do you do? <laughs> we're shaking like crazy trying to cut table legs for the console in the studio so we can get uh, so we can get the office and everything set up and start getting some equipment plugged in, hopefully sometime today or maybe tomorrow. So. The console is going to face this direction and sort of be set down into the table so that people can see um, between the production studio and the on air studio. number of workshops going on, official ones and unofficial ones being organized um, by dozens upon dozens of geniuses of community radio and media for social change, media activism. There's also an incredible news production track going on. Um, there's uh, people from Pacifica and Free Speech Radio News and all kinds of independent radio production teams are teaching brand new reporters how to take a microphone and a mini disc and get the local news out into their community 
from that community, how to edit it and produce a piece on the radio that'll wake people up to things they're not hearing anywhere else. It's an incredible track. Um, there's all kinds of wonderful, really deep technical tracks where people from novices to advanced folks can learn all about how audio works, how to physically build a transmitter, how to tune an antenna, how to make sure that a station, once it's on the air, can really be in the hands of the community that is broadcasting on it, that really owns it together. The reason that we have barn raisings, as Pete always says it as, it's not because getting 150 people to sleep in the mud um, and hold a soldering iron that they've never held before. That's not the most efficient way to build a radio station, but it is the most efficient way to build this movement for um, democratic media owned and controlled by communities. And so when we build these stations, what we're doing is, is we're creating experts in the power of this radio, um, not just in terms of building it and it's celebrating it, but also in terms of convincing legislators and regulators, people in Congress, people at the FCC, that this service is important, that this is something which is the backbone of the responsibility that they have to us in the United States. Radio Free Nashville started back in 1997 as a direct response to the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Um, there was a group of us who were really concerned about what uh, the media consolidation that, that the Telecommunications Act sanction was going to do to not only our community but this country in general. We met Free Radio Nashville, or Radio Free Nashville, when we went on the road um, in advance of and in 2000 to try to really raise the alarm and sound the cry that communities who had been excised from the airwaves, who hadn't had any outlet to tell their stories or to hear each other speak, were about to get this opportunity to do so because we were fighting to get this service, Low Power FM, a 100-watt community radio established at the FCC for them to give out licenses free and clear to organizations all over the country. So we applied for the license and um, lo and behold, one day in the mail came our construction permit and we about dropped dead. Um, and of course, very naively we thought that meant, oh gee, we're going to be on the air in 18 months. Woohoo, no problem at all. Um, not long after that, we got a petition to deny from a station here. We were on a co-adjacency with WANT in Lebanon. And, um, had to fight that again, more money, more lawyer fees, more engineering things to respond to this. Prometheus worked with them and the tireless organizers of Radio Free Nashville to get another application in, get it reinstated and get that construction permit. And so it's been like a really long time, over five years, that we've been working with this organization to finally get, ah, uh, to finally get the airwaves free. And every possible thing that could have screwed us up happened. I mean everything. I was tearing my hair out. I'm thinking, a barn raising? Why the hell am I doing a barn raising? How stupid is this? Why does anybody do this? This is just crazy. It was a long struggle from the very beginning. Um, a lot of support from people in the community, though, and that really, really kept us going. Even when we were playing that game of hurry up and wait with the FCC, and there was no tangible progress when you're asking people to help pay pay lawyer bills and engineering bills, when you're not a nonprofit, when you don't have a radio station, you don't know if you're going to have a radio station. People were just, they always stepped up to, up to the plate when they needed to, and that made a huge difference. And now with the barn raising, um, it's great. I mean, just to see people coming from around the country and helping us do this, and people who believe in the same things that we believe in and why this is important, and who want to see us succeed, um, it's really overwhelming. You know, nothing can phase us anymore. Nothing's going to stop us. Nothing's going to stop LPFM, and we're here. My name's Doug. I live in East Nashville. I'm a volunteer. I'm going to do a radio show.
this is the transmitter for Radio Free Nashville and uh, we are in test mode and uh, we have audio in it and now we're just trying to improve the sound by mm, uh, messing with uh, the knobs on a couple different things. Okay. Yeah, we can, you know, I might do it later, but you can wire up like a little remote on the DD9 connector on that. that sounds a little better than what you just heard just now, you can volunteer at this station. Go to RadioFreeNashville.org today. WRFN Nashville. Actually, we're WRFN Pasqua Nashville. Low power for the people. I think, I think mission has been more than accomplished. Radio Free Nashville is now reaching 